So it all starts with observation. And one of the observations you want to look at is you want to look at the cue angle. And if somebody, for example, fell on an outstretched hand, they might actually have an accentuated cue angle greater than the other side. So you would look and compare to see if there was a, a greater angle on the other side, uh, on one side compared to the other. Then what we would do is you would do observation. You're going to look for obvious swelling. Now in acute injuries, you know, the swelling is going to be worse within the first three to five days, and it should have a predictable ramp down after that. You're going to look for obvious atrophy, obvious change in color, so you're going to, to see, okay, if somebody has carpal tunnel, they're going to have a certain pattern of atrophy. If somebody has more of a uh, ulnar nerve problem or maybe even a, a, a lower cervical problem, they could have atrophy in this area here. So again, looking at that observation in that area, it's going to make a, make a big difference. So we always start with observation, obvious scars, patients will have scars. And you'll mention it to them like, oh, I didn't think that mattered. I fractured that 10 years ago. And so I think, you know, they figure they grew a new one back at that point or something. So then what we can do is we can do our active range of motion. And then based on our hypothesis, how does wrist extension look? And how is that with overpressure? How does wrist flexion look? And how is that with overpressure? You realize that when you're doing ulnar deviation with overpressure, that's more of a TFCC issue. If that isn't in your hypothesis, then that test there may have a little less value than if you do radial deviation and see if that causes increased pain or numbness. So again, we're looking at these in different positions. Now remember, if I extend the elbow and then I do wrist flexion, we're getting close to looking at what we would test for lateral epicondylitis. I'm just one resisted test away. Go ahead and push up into me, looking for Cosen sign. So realize and cluster those tests in your head as you're doing it, instead of just saying, okay, I'm going to extend the elbow, active range of motion over pressure, and this, with the elbow in extension, is close to a neurodynamic test that always has wrist extension involved. So this would look more like median nerve as well. So those tests are right under the surface. And so when you're doing these, just don't say, oh, elbow extension, wrist extension, increase pain. You have to realize what underlying tests are with that when you do the selective tissue tension testing.